we still have to analyze the space consumption of the data structure and we have to figure out how to do the querying and how much time it takes. The space consumption is quite interesting because at every internal node here we store a second tree. So in the root we store a second tree that has order of n vertices. In its children we have two second trees. Both of them have order of n over 2 vertices. But we have two of them, so two times order of n over two. And then for the next one, we have four. All of them have order of n over four. So there's a lot of additional information that we have to store. So every node in our first level tree points to a second level tree that has exactly as many nodes inside. So what is your guess? What's the total space consumption of all these second level trees together? Is it n squared, n log n, n log squared n, or is it linear? To analyze what it is, we don't count how many of these trees we have and how many nodes they have, but we look at a single vertex. So let's to like look at a single point of our input set. And we want to count how many of these second level trees contain it. So we have a single point here that corresponds to a leaf. And on this path from the root to the leaf, all these second level trees contain the point P. As soon as I get away from this path, the second level trees will not contain P anymore. And it's a bi balanced binary search tree, so the height of it is order of log n or theta of log n. So there are theta of log n second level trees that contain p. Now this is the case for every point. Every point is contained in exactly theta of log n second level trees. So if we sum up the number of points contained in all these trees together, this is at most order of n log n. So we have theta of n log n space here. What about the querying? In the querying, we do the same thing as we had in one dimensions. We look for in the first level tree for the v-split, find these canonical subsets, but then instead of reporting, we do another one-dimensional query. So what we have to do is, we have to figure out, we look at all these vertices in the balanced binary search tree, on the paths to mu the left boundary and to mu prime the right boundary. And now for all of these vertices on the path we do our one-dimensional range query that takes order of k plus log n time. In this case order of ku because we only report those points that lie in the subtree. So for every vertex here on this path and on this path we take time one-dimensional range query. Let's try to sum this up. We have to sum up all these KUs and we have to sum up all these log Ns. All these KUs together, that's the points that we report in the subtree, so all together that's just the number of points that we want to report. And if we sum up over all these log Ns, how many of those do we have? We have order of log N on the blue path and order of log N on the red path. So we have order of log n of these u's, that means that this is order of log squared n, or 2h times order of log n. So the total running time now is order of k plus log squared n for the range trees. What about higher dimensions? In higher dimensions, we continue the same concept. So if we go here to our second level tree, we would do a 1D range query to report all the points. If we have three dimensions, then in the first level, we attach to every vertex a second level tree of two dimensions. And then there we attach a second or a third level tree of one dimension. So we have to continue in every, for every dimension, we have to continue to a next level tree that sorts all the points inside it by the next dimension. So it might look like this, we go from here to this, then we find the next subtree, we go to the next level, find the next one, go to the next level, and so on. 
and to query for each of these dimensions we have to do one more level and each of these as we can see here takes order of log n more time just to find the step where we have to continue so the query time here is k plus log to the dn and the storage there we can use the same argumentation as before every point in all of these sub next level trees lies in order of log n next level trees. So we have log n here, for each of them log n here, for each of them log n here. So the number of trees that lies in is log to the d minus 1. So this is our whole storage time and the construction time takes just as much because we have to do something for every point that we store. So let's compare. We have the KD tree and we have the range tree. For two dimensions, both of them have the construction time order of log n of order of n log n. But KD trees have a smaller storage. They only need linear, while range tree need order of n log n storage. On the other hand, the query time with range trees is much better because log squared is much smaller than square root of n. At least as long as the k does not get too large. If k is order of n, then this doesn't matter. So kd tree, less storage. Range tree, less query time. So the range trees are better when you know that you only have very small queries. When you know that your queries will be big, then this doesn't matter here, and then you should use the KD trees. So here we have a trade-off between the space and the query time. There's one more thing. In the beginning we assumed that we have general position. No, no two points have the same x or y coordinate. Now we want to get rid of this. And to get rid of this we use a little trick. We use composite numbers with a lexicographical order. So if you have a point that has x coordinate x and y coordinate y, what we create out of this is a point that has x coordinate x composited with y and y coordinate y composited with x. So now as long as we don't have two points with the same coordinates, the coordinates we get are unique. And for the queries, we want to query all the points that lie in some rectangle. But now we have to make sure that even with the composite numbers it works out. So we have to make sure that whatever range we query for, all the points that have x coordinate, at least x and at most x prime, lie inside, and the same with the y coordinates. So our query range that we get for the composite numbers also has to add minus infinity here, plus infinity here, minus infinity here, and plus infinity here to get all the points with these coordinates. There's one more thing we technically have to show that one point P lies inside this range if and only if the composite point lies inside this range. But I leave that up to you. That's almost trivial. Yeah. But this way we can remove our assumption that the points are in general position. We can solve all sets of points and we can use the KD trees and range trees for them, no matter how many of them have the same X or Y coordinate.